Now it's time to spray insulation foam into the six sections of the hull. I used five cans between two pontoons. I filled each section about halfway up. It's hard to guess how much it'll expand. The foam, in my opinion, should give the pontoon a little support inside the hull. Also, work as flotation. Trimming the excess expanded foam with a large kitchen knife works well. Making tick marks to locate the cross braces when screwing and gluing the top on the pontoon. Center line drawn on the top or deck made from a 4 foot by 10 inch by 3 quarter inch white pine board. After centering and lining up the hull to the deck, I traced a line around the hull. After transferring the tick marks from the hull to the deck, I drew lines to use as a guide for drilling holes for the deck screws. After measuring halfway from the center of the deck in both directions, I used the old pontoon to make sure the new pontoon will fit the canoe. I used the outrigger arm to mark the center of the post that will connect the pontoon to the outrigger arm. Now it's time to cut out the deck with my saber saw. I made sure I left a small amount of wood outside of the pencil line. After lining up the center section of the connecting post, I lined up the outrigger to make sure the bolt holes in the outrigger are in the same position as they are in the old post. Holding the outrigger arm in place, I drilled a hole through the arm into the post. I put a bolt in place to make sure the hole stays in position. Then I drilled the second hole. Now the new post will fit the old outrigger arm as all the original holes were drilled at random. Now it's just a matter of nailing and gluing the pieces of the post together. With the holes I drilled into the new post lined up with the holes in the outrigger, I placed the bolt into one of the holes to keep it lined up. Then I drilled the other hole all the way through the new post. After marking where I want the screws to be located in the deck, I drilled the holes for them. After drilling the holes for the screws, I countersunk them to keep the head of the screws below the surface of the deck. After lining up the tick marks of the deck with the hull, I taped the deck to the hull, then I drilled pilot holes for the screws. I used brass screws to hold the deck in place so I could use a rasp to remove the excess wood from the edge of the deck. I cut the end of the deck to make it line up with the stem. Okay. 
After I got the dex edge flush with the edge of the hull, I marked a line a half inch from the edge all the way around the deck. I rounded the edge of the deck staying inside of the line I marked. Rounding the edge helps to keep air bubbles from forming under fiberglass cloth when bending it over an edge. I squared up the post and traced its position on the deck, then marked and drilled holes to fasten it. I mixed a batch of epoxy resin and added filler to make a strong glue to attach the post to the deck. Filled in with epoxy and filler over the countersunk screw heads. Using a popsicle stick, I filled the joints of the post and the braces to help the fiberglass cloth bend around the joint and make the post stronger. I used the epoxy and filler to glue the deck to the hull. Then after screwing down the deck, I used it to fill the countersunk screw head holes. After the epoxy hardened, I filed the joints smooth and sanded the hull before I fiberglassed everything. I mixed a batch of resin and started laying the fiberglass cloth on the hull. I put two layers of cloth on the hull. The bow and stern got several layers to make them strong. After the resin hardened, I trimmed the excess cloth and sanded the edge of the deck. I then fiberglassed the top portion of the pontoon. I took the pontoon outside to file and sand it smooth. I then mixed epoxy and filler to fillet any rough areas before painting. I made a light sanding of the entire pontoon to make the primer stick easier.
I used acetone to clean off any dust. then primed it. After the primer dried, I brushed on a topside paint for the finished coat. Well, this just about wraps up how I made my new pontoons for a 16-foot canoe. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll get out on the water and give it a try, and we'll make uh, part number three. Well, thanks for watching.